Are you ready to be in top form? You're about to enjoy and be transformed by some killer life and business hacks that we've designed to improve everything from your marketing and management to your fitness, health, lifestyle, and even your travel. You're gonna be looking good. Come and get it. So just a reminder to anybody that uh, is joining us over the next few minutes, we have changed our format. So we're actually doing a second shorter show today, but uh, let me swing this around so you can see what's going on here. There's a lot more action taking place, a lot more technology. We're not broadcasting with our fancy, fancy uh, Facebook software anymore uh, because we could get way better quality and we could bring you something in post-production that's going to be a lot more interesting to you. So today, uh, we hope you share this if you know anybody. And since this will drop, Leslie, this will drop before uh, um, the, Super Bowl. the Super Bowl. So if you're oh, thinking about having a cocktail party as part of the Super Bowl or a single cocktail. I'll be having cocktails during the Super Bowl. You will be? Regularly. Yeah. yeah. Not just I, one. I won't be start. watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> but I'll be having cocktails. <laughs> but um, uh, share this with anybody that you know wants to do a little bit more entertaining and make it a little bit more rich and interesting. So everybody these days, uh, if you entertain, do, will you guys entertain? Do you do cocktails ever, or do you do beer and wine? Oh yeah, you do cocktails. cocktails. Yeah. So I just think that the cocktail thing has sort of fallen out of favor. Yeah. In favor of the ultra simplicity of having uh, beer and wine, which is nice. Don't get me wrong, and it's better to have people over than not. But we're going to be suggesting today that um, there may be four or five cocktails, just that you could pick one of these or mm -hmm. find one on your own. That's something else we're going to talk about. Like I have, uh, I keep a little book of my own. So when I run across a cocktail recipe, nice. I write it down. And then Sam, you, uh, you, have, you, two, you took a look at these. I have two resources. I used to be a bartender years ago. That's how I made money. Um, the Bartender's Black Book which is just loaded with recipes. And this and is a very cool book. This is a cool book. Yeah. It's called uh, Mixed Up. And it is a combination of recipes, uh, fiction, true stories. And it also has something from, from the publisher. It comes with lots of these little handwritten notes yeah. in there, which is kind of cool. So, you know, I was thinking about that. That's kind of interesting is like, you know, you and I both send like books. Mm-hmm not just recommendations, but books to our clients, it could be a nice little touch to send them a could. book with some notes that we've put in there ourselves. I think so. it's a very nice touch. So today we're not, for a change, talking about business. We're yeah. talking about a lifestyle issue, but we can't help we ourselves. Can't help ourselves. <laughs> Whenever yeah. we see something like that, I just I think the same thing. It could be yeah. just a fabulous. What's <clears throat> If you wanted to scale it a little bit, you can have a printer do what, what was done here by the publisher. Yeah. And if there are 10 or 20 notes you want to put in, you can... Uh, just have them printed, digitally printed, right. and save you writing them over and over again. And then that lets you put more notes in more copies of books. And then our intern is here with us for the second show, but That's first right. day ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you guys would use your intern to um, like stuff post-it notes in books, but I know some of you would. I, so. I definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> so do the intern, does the intern in your business of, mm -hmm. of video like get the same kind of jobs that the interns do in my business, which is the stuff nobody else wants to do? Coffee or, runs. Schlepping, carrying things. As long as you pay. I, I don't know if you remember <laughs> blocking out from your memory. I did intern. You, I do remember. Yeah. I do. Was it awful? It was fantastic for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, too. Time ago. Yeah, we've had some amazing interns. Yeah, my so, mom yeah. actually wanted me to intern for you when I was in college, too. Oh, you should have done it. So we have, this looks like an awful lot, uh, but only because we're going to sort of uh, take you through uh, equipment and maybe four or five different kinds of cocktails. Yep. We're not going big on dessert cocktails because we're going to make that a separate show. Mm -hmm. But... Um, you know, you're going to be able to narrow this down to just a few items because we're suggesting that when you entertain, you should um, have a theme cocktail yeah. and not try to satisfy everybody with every imaginable kind of cocktail because then you're not having fun. But if you do this right, you can put this together. You can even make a uh, fun game of showing people the new cocktail and let yep. people do it themselves. Or you could do rounds of cocktails to serve them or you could teach them to somebody who's helping you out in the kitchen yeah. who could serve them. So lots of ways that you could do this. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit some about glassware first. Sure. So it used to be that there was a different glass for every kind yeah. of cocktail. And still at certain kinds of bars you would find that to be true. But most bars and restaurants have gone to a couple kinds of glasses. They have a white wine glass and a red wine glass. Mm -hmm. Then they have a glass like this, which is uh, like a I just call them a rocks, rocks glass. glass. Yeah. You could you will also see historically some with bigger bottoms so you can muddle stuff right yeah. in the glass, but that sort of height. This is a glass that you'd see a Pilsner or a beer served in. Mm -hmm. There's this size, and then there's also this size, yeah. which I might also use depending on how I'm feeling for a Bloody Mary or something like that. We're gonna talk about some variations of that. Uh, and then there is a uh, glass for the martini. martini. Mm -hmm. And there's an infinite variety of things that could be served and uh, created from the martini class. That's right. Um, but if you have um, a glass this size or this size, kind of like a Collins glass or a Pilsner glass, and you have a rocks glass like this, you're pretty much going to be able to do anything that we're talking about doing. Right. And you can make it fit in one of those. So uh, just a couple of things, things that you want to have in any well-equipped bar. Um, I have one, two, three, oh, that's a syrup. So I have three bitters here mm -hmm. with different sort of flavor ranges. Yep. I think you would want to have those. This one we're going to experiment with for the first time today, which is Fee Brothers Cherry, Cherry Bitters. bitters. Could be good with them. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued yeah. by that too. Uh, a little bit more on the traditional side, Jack Rudy aromatic bitters. Mm -hmm. Very traditional type of bitters. And then uh, this one's called basement bitters. Bitter frost. Very interesting. So we've got three different kinds there. Something else that you would probably want to have are a couple of simple syrups. Yep. I usually make them, but for today we just bought one. And then we also have uh, Liber and Company, which is a manufacturer of, uh, um, you know, some really good bartending yeah. products, a, uh, a real grenadine syrup. Mm -hmm. So you can give drinks that red or pinkish color. Um, you're going to need some se seasonings, mm -hmm. depending on what you like. So if you're, yeah. if you're a big fan of the Bloody Mary, which we're going to do one of today, and you're going to talk about a couple of variations, yeah. having a good seasoning salt mix and a celery seed, vitally important. Uh, also, horseradish. So this I dug out of the ground in mm -hmm. my uh, garden and made. It's quite good. It's very strong. Yeah, my daughter likes it too. Does she? Oh yeah. And then I'm a fan with a lot of drinks of the uh, salted rim. Yes. So I like a really big flake. I like uh, for this flake salt, yeah. like an English flake salt. So the trick there is just to give the glass a little turn in mm -hmm. some liquid and then let it you know, shake off the excess and just put it in the salt and it'll, it'll adhere and then make the drink. Okay. Tyson's on. Tyson is on. Ah, yep. yeah. Wow, Hi. welcome Tyson. You're up early in the morning there in Australia, buddy. He heard we were talking about drinking now. Yeah, and he just he won another he prize. Won. <laughs> yeah, he won another prize. We know that Tyson is an amazing supporter of the yes. show because he yes. wins a prize almost every week. So we got to put together, I think you've won two or three. And it was an Amazon gift card this time, Tyson. So. Uh, that was that won't be expensive to ship over to you soon. I'll be able to take it to Tyson I'm speaking for his conference, which is coming up in Cairns, Australia yeah. And is he gonna be in Philly soon? He is he's yeah. coming to Philly for um, Podcast movement. Oh interesting. So you and I should go to that. We should. Yeah, yeah. we're podcasters. Yeah, we we'll roll in there yeah. Kick butt. I bet you there's not a lot of martial artist podcasters There's quite a few actually are there. Yeah, but are they any good? Joe Rogan kind of is. Well, well, that's true. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Okay, you make your point. A um, couple of other things. Find your favorites. Uh, I've got a pineapple juice here, which is great for certain kinds of frozen mm -hmm. drinks, and a mango. So once you find these sort of flavor mixtures, I like, by the way, on the Bloody Mary, which we're going to do, I like a combo of the original V8 because it's super high in sodium, and a tomato juice. Right. So uh, that, to me, makes a nice flavor. And then there's a bunch of... Um, Oh yeah, here's a natural cocktail syrup. So that was the third one that we had. There. Uh, then we're going to have the the major, the stars of the yeah. show. But before we get to that, we've got some other things that we have to add. So I've got the Jack Rudy uh, Cocktail Company um, olives, 
for the martini or dirty that are, martini are already vermouth brown. Yes, very nice. Very, very nice very touch. Nice. Yeah. Now I don't even know how to say this, but these are the most amazing cherries, and these uh, people tout and carry on about for ice cream. Mm. I've never had them with ice cream, but they are amazing in a Manhattan. Yeah. So how would you say that, so? I'm how, not, how would I say it? Yeah. Amarina. Fabri. Fabri. Yeah, that's... That so, works. That works. at any rate, if you are a uh, fan of the Manhattan or you just like sweet cherries, yeah. these are insane. If you're a fan of drinking or ice cream. <laughs> exactly, you should get those. And then uh, we've got three things here. We've got Lele, which is going to be used in the um, Vesper, yep. which is a variation of a martini we're going to make. Um, and then, you know, we've got these olives. You would use the olive juice along with a uh, dry vermouth, an extra dry mm -hmm. vermouth in the traditional martini. And then again in the Manhattan, we would have a sweet vermouth. So we've got a sweet vermouth, an extra dry vermouth, lillet, and the olive juice here mm -hmm. is going to serve the uh, dual function of making a dirty martini. Uh, final thing on equipment. Um, I, I have a shaker here with a built-in strainer. You can yep. also just have a strainer, um, you know, that fits over the yep. end of strain. I'm a fan of stirring the drinks even in this rather mm -hmm. than shaking. But every now and then, if you're not worried, like if you're making a martini or a Vesper, having it be, you know, uh, filled with those little bubbles and looking kind of white, to me, just isn't as interesting. Yeah, and they say that also, you know, shaking bruises the gin. I don't, I don't know, know what that means. <laughs> if it's just being pretentious. <laughs> it may be. Yeah. And listen, uh, we're doing a show on cocktails, so we're clearly not against being pretentious. No. In fact, we, we've cultivated pretension almost to an art form. Mm -hmm. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of the stirring and then, you know, you can put this back on. Now, yeah. as I say, if I'm going to have something in it with these kind of juices where I really want to mm -hmm. meld the flavors with a vodka or something like that. And then you're going to take us through the mule, which I've never... Mule, simple drink, but very tasty. So you've got a ginger beer there. And we're not today doing the sweet... Godiva and Kahlua and after dinner kind of cocktails. No, but but um, we're going to do it. Sure. So we just we can't mix them in. Yeah. Um, I thought it was funny, by the way, that the earlier show, which Tyson missed, was on organic foods and just mm -hmm. being healthier. And uh, but you can only take that for so long before you got to make yourself a nice drink. That's true. And it, you know, related. These cherries are gluten-free. Yes, I saw that on there. <laughs> so the celiac uh, sufferers among us can partake of, of yeah. everything that we're going to show you here today. Yeah. Ah, so why don't you describe to everybody the like a couple of the things we've got here. Obviously, your favorite brand might not be here, but anybody right. that's going to do a cocktail is going to want to run through some of these kinds of so liquors. So staples that you should have is a vodka. And we've got two kinds here. Yeah, we've got Kettle One. So I like my martinis with Kettle One. I do too. Yep. I like your martinis and mine with Kettle One. <laughs> uh, Boyd and Blair Potato Vodka. Which is a producer Leslie favorite. Oh, very nice. Is that nice. because you have a restriction in what sort of thing you I, I can essentially only drink vodka and lagers. Wow. Well, so if I'm going to yeah. drink straight vodka, it better be a good vodka. Mm -hmm. We've got a gin, Bombay, also my choice. We've got a scotch and an Irish whiskey, a Canadian whiskey, but there's no bourbon whiskey here. Oh, there, we should have brought a bourbon out right. too. But I, um, so you want to talk a little bit about the difference between scotch and the and the Irish whiskeys and the uh, Canadian Yeah, American so there whiskeys. are a lot of rules, so to speak, with what makes a whiskey, what kind of whiskey. So uh, a scotch needs to be made in Scotland. A bourbon... Although the Japanese wish that were not true, and they make some stuff that tastes amazingly like good scotch. Yeah, and, <laughs> and uh, Indians do as well, where they they make what's called a neutral spirit, and then they flavor it after the process, and it's it's pretty good. So a scotch needs to be made in Scotland. Irish whiskey is made in, in Ireland. Bourbons, it's a misnomer that a bourbon needs to be made in Kentucky. It just needs to be made in the U.S., and interestingly, by the way, you'll taste the locale in a scotch. You know, you'll have a smoky oh, or peaty yeah. flavor. Whereas, it, interestingly, because I don't think people realize this, Jameson's and some of these Irish whiskeys are triple distilled and filtered and all sorts oh, of yeah. things going on in the process so that you won't taste the location or the place mm -hmm. as much at those. So another requirement of a bourbon is that it has to be in a new barrel. 
So the, uh, the flavor is a little bit more unique. And then typically like, so Maker's Mark, for example, after they age the bourbon in the barrel, they will sell the barrels, I believe it's to Lafrag to make their scotch. So it's, uh, you know, reuse. Mm. It's good for the environment. It's good for the environment, just like the organic <laughs> shop. Right. So you're helping the environment yeah. here. Because yeah. somebody was going to make alcohol. And, and you'll find a, a particular uh, flavor that you'll like, and that will end up being your like go-to beverage, uh, whether it's a mixed cocktail or just a, you know, drinking uh, something neat. So, for example, today I'm going to use a Crown Royal mm -hmm. to make the Manhattan. What, how do you make your Manhattan? What do with you Crown, use? With Crown yeah, Royal. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a remarkably similar uh, yeah. taste in yeah. these things then. Yeah, I might say it's refined. It is. It's a refined and a pretentious taste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's a question before we get into actually mi mixing drinks. Mm -hmm. When you're drinking scotch or whiskey in general, do you add water or not? Do you mean me or should you? Well, both. Okay. Okay. So for me, uh, scotch, I don't. But with whiskey, I do have it on the rocks often. Okay. And I will, in the right circumstances, add like just a little bit of water to Interesting. it. Interesting. So, so you? How about so you? if if I'm drinking like a bourbon on the rocks, no water, no water. is added. And mm -hmm. If I'm drinking a whiskey neat, I will add just a touch of water. And let's talk about the difference between neat and uh, what's another word I hear people use? So up, up. What is the difference between neat? Is and there a up? difference? Because I ordered a drink <laughs> up once, and I got what I thought was neat. So neat, in my understanding, Your parlance. is the parlance of the times. Uh, neat is just just the alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. Up is the alcohol with a side of ice, mm -hmm. and on the rocks is with on the, the rocks. rocks in yeah. there. that's what I think is correct too. Yeah. But people can call in and correct us if, if I hope they would. That. You can always ask Alexa if you're right too. Oh, like Alexa, oh, yeah. what's the difference between neat? and up when you're ordering a drink. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know that one. Hmm. Alexa, Alexa doesn't drink. No, what does it mean to have a drink neat? Sorry, I don't know that. I'm surprised by that. I think probably Jeff Bezos wants her to focus on medical marijuana. Yeah. Because he's gonna have lockers at Whole Foods. Well, there's also the like state prohibition of alcohol, so he hasn't been able to move in yet. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, they have a, uh, a pub there at the new Whole Foods. Oh, really? Yeah, so oh. he's figured a way to like, ring a little bit more out of that. Nice. Okay, so would you like to start? Sure. All right, so I will start with the Moscow Mule. Which uh, would traditionally be served in a copper... Yeah, it doesn't have vessel. to be. It doesn't have to be. Uh, if you want to be a little fancy, if you have like uh, what's called a mule mug, like a, a copper-looking type something... You can do it in that. So typically a Moscow mule is made with ginger beer. I couldn't tell you technically what the difference is between ginger beer and ginger ale, but ginger beer is not alcoholic. It's just different in some way. To me, it's a little bit spicier. You get more of the flavor of the ginger. Uh, you'll do a little bit of ice, maybe that or a little less. Now you can go through measurements of how much, how many parts alcohol, how many parts mixer. I typically don't measure. I go with just kind of a, you know, eyeball measurement. If I'm doing something with uh, like one alcohol and then the mixer is flavored, I'll go like one third, two thirds. If there's alcohol, soda, and flavoring, then one third, one third, one third, and you should be pretty good without needing to measure exactly. So you have your vodka. I'll so go. the traditional mule is vodka. Yeah. So we'll Moscow. go Moscow. Moscow mule. Sense. Yeah. So we'll go about one third. And Chloe, intern Chloe, you you can have this. You weren't just kidding about that. One third of a glass yeah, of. She's old enough. <laughs> well, I was just skeptical at the start. <laughs> yeah. She oh, her, she answered my did question. You, did you check her ID? <laughs> I well, no, I haven't. And yeah. when I said how old are you, her answer was how old are you. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's fair. Well, I answered yeah. you and then I answered. That's true. Yeah. It's clearly 28. <laughs> <laughs> she Wait, rolled her eyes and said. No, he just guessed it. How did you know he said 28? Because that's how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a hard life. Well, you didn't turn 29, did you? No, but it's soon. Soon, right. Okay. <laughs> so then you're going to go about two thirds. 
ginger beer, and then typically you'll garnish with a lime, which oh. I forgot to grab. Nope. Well, we have a we have a cutting board and we have limes here. So he's grabbing some limes. Is that too big? It's too big, but we can. Um, oh, always, you go. always carry a knife in case you're bartending. <laughs> this is not really <laughs> a proper knife for this. But. I can get you a kitchen knife. There we go. See, always come prepared. Yeah, you are. You are, sir. <laughs> and then, you know, up to you. I'm glad you didn't need a garrote for this drink. <laughs> Boom. And then you might put in a stirring straw, something like that. Yeah, so uh, taste if I'm making, well, I think we've got a taster here for that. Here you go. Go for it. I'm only well, you, should get, you should get you on camera. No, you are not. <laughs> 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 Wait, can I here? We, we have to see your face. You're on camera. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. And so it's simple. Like, it's very easy to make. Mm -hmm. it's, it's flavorful. It's good. All right. Thank very you. Nice. Enjoy. Can I keep it? You can keep it. Okay. Now, um, the uh, let me just see here. I'm going to do a small one. Uh, so we're going to do the uh, Bloody Mary. And mm -hmm. while I'm getting set up, you're going to talk about... Um, some variations of the Bloody Mary. So yeah, Bloody so Mary. Typical Bloody Mary is done with vodka. Uh, you know, there's some colloquials for alternatives. So we have the Bloody Mary with vodka, Bloody Maria, which would be with a tequila, and then a Bloody Molly would be a uh, same mix, but with your whiskey of choice. Now, you probably wouldn't use uh, some of these, like a scotch or a nicer type of whiskey for a drink like that. Maybe you're... Evan Williams or Jack Daniels type of thing that you would put in to your bloody ma uh, Molly, if you will. So, Sam, this is from my garden. Mm -hmm. So, horseradish. Obviously, yeah. that's going to be to taste. And if you're making it for a big group, start lighter, especially if you've made your own, and then yeah. like sort of add it in at the end. Um, I like to have a little seasoning, and I like a little celery salt or mm -hmm. celery seed mashed up and a seasoning salt with a little garlic in there. What are we, is Tyson, um, who's commenting? Is Tyson carrying on, Lee? Lee's trying to invite herself over. Oh, you're close, Lee. Over. You can come over. And uh, like I said, I, oh, I didn't salt this, but uh, you could just put this salt in yep. here, then salt the rim. That's a nice touch with these. Um, you could use celery. You could use a shrimp. Yeah. And I always like the to do put the seasonings in before the liquid. Seasonings yeah. in first, then the liquid on top. I also like uh, some Worcestershire sauce. Always use organic celery though. Organic celery, celery is what I've got right here. It's on the Although list. I do like the <laughs> shrimp idea too. Mm -hmm. And I have used it. And there's a lot of ooing and eye. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Oh, and uh, Worcestershire sauce. I personally have a weird secret weapon that I put in. I like pepper in it too. I have a little splash of onion juice that I put oh, in. Nice. And that's one of those things that people taste it, tastes a little different. It's a Worcestershire sauce. That's good. And then a little bit of lime. Not everybody goes for the lime, but a lot of people do. Freshly cut lime. Freshly cut, <laughs> like very freshly cut. And the other thing is that you can use a little bit like a, if, like almost if you were doing a dirty martini, mm -hmm. you use a little of like do that. olive. And then there is also um, like a cornichon. You could use yeah. a little bit of the cornichon juice in there. And people will know that it tastes a little different, but they'll either like it or not. Anybody that likes the Bloody Mary? There we go. Mm -hmm. And now you have to tell me, because I haven't tasted it you know, the first round to see if I am enjoying that or not. So you'll have to let me know how that is. Here we go. We've got the taste test going on. Oh, yeah. It's good? It's delicious. Oh, wait. We didn't add the main There's ingredient. No, uh, the superstar. You have a Virgin Mary there right oh, now. Oh, wow. So, I didn't even notice. Usually I can't tell. And you'll be able to tell now. There we go. So, Sam, what do you have next for us? 
So next, I was going to talk about some like slightly healthier options, just simple mixes. Mm -hmm. So typically, you might uh, hear of like a vodka tonic or a gin and tonic. And for me personally, I think the tonic has too much flavor. It takes away from the flavor of the alcohol. But also, you may not know <laughs> that tonic itself has a lot of calories in it. A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar, a lot of calories. So uh, a nice alternative for that is going with a seltzer or mineral water or even a club soda. Uh, so one mix that I like, especially in the summer, uh, I'm not going to make one right now just because it's, it's pretty easy to do, but do a tequila and seltzer with uh, either lime juice or freshly squeezed lime. And it's uh, sometimes people call it a paleo mar margarita. And you can do something similar with gin and seltzer, vodka and seltzer, uh, depending on what you like. So it's you know low calorie and delicious, and it'll get you a buzz. It sounds like a fantastic summer drink. And uh, Dave and vodka or Dave and tequila don't go together because mm -hmm. of an incident. Yeah. Uh, but I think I might even be able to do that one. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a whirl. So now we're gonna do a drink that will stir and serve up which is the Manhattan, mm. and we're gonna do the Crown Royal Manhattan. So the first few times you do this, you should really pay attention to the ratios. Uh, I'm just sort of used to using this particular equipment for it. So we're gonna use some Crown Royal as the whiskey. We're gonna, now the people that I make these for usually like them a little sweet. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go not only with some sweet vermouth, but we are also going to go with the ice cream cherry juice. Oh, nice. So just a little splash of it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And here, we're actually gonna add, just because you and I want to, yeah. a little cherry bitters in there. Do you, sir, may I uh, impose upon you to use your, your weapon on there? Jeez, yeah, sure. <laughs> Knife. Like, yeah. How do you use that? So there you You're go. Mostly scaring people. <laughs> <laughs> do we have questions? We'd like to thank everybody. We have a big audience coming on. Yeah. This go ahead, sir. What do you think? Just a little. I just give it one. One more. When I say one, I'm, of course I meant four. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I would stir this. I put a cherry in there. Now you can serve this up or on the rocks. Yep. And however you'd prefer. How would you like to have it today? So rocks or? I'll do it up. Up or okay. rock, rocks. Rocks. Yeah. Okay. So we're just gonna, we're gonna pour it in here. There you go. All right. So see, so you can see pretty easy. And then again, it's mainly just a matter of the ratio of these things. Right. And you have a couple of bottles of these cherries, or you have a couple of things of the mailing. Right. Is that nice? Yeah. How about those bitters? Yeah. I nice might touch. have to I might have to take nice a little taste. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It's good. It's good. So this is a spectacularly sophisticated, interesting drink. Yeah. It takes practically no time to put together. You can serve a couple of rounds of that and it goes very, you know, well with a lot of different kinds of foods that yeah. you could be serving. So um, I think we have one more to do before we go. And again, we're not talking about the fruity kind of drinks, but yeah. lots of things you could do with vodka, with gin. But we are going to do a drink involving both vodka and gin, lemon, so I'll have to get that out, mm -hmm. just a twist anyway, and the Lillet in place of the uh, vermouth, and that is the Vesper. So I'm going to see this, this particular author has experimented a lot. And he mm. says, because the recipe for Lillet changed in the 1980s, mm. he's now going with two ounces of dry gin, a half ounce of vodka, a quarter ounce of Lillet, and a lemon peeled to garnish. So uh, let me get this rinsed while I get the lemon, mm. and then we'll take a crack at that, sir. Yeah. So while he's getting ready, the pineapple juice, I think, is a nice mixer. There's a, a drink that we had, it was like a, a, the theme drink of our wedding. We called it the Spicy Ninja. So it was vodka, uh, pineapple juice. Which happens to be your nickname as also. well, sir. So it made, it made sense. And uh, it was infused with jalapeno. Ooh. So we, we uh, had a bartender friend of ours make that a couple days prior, get all the spiciness in there, and um, it was a good party. Put it that way. So we're going uh, two ounces of gin. Yep. 
And we're going with a half ounce of vodka. vodka. I'm gonna get a lemon while you work on this one. And if you just wanna put a splash of the lele in there. Quarter. Oh, quarter. Really? It's not open yet. Well, we could have prepared more for the show in that way, but that takes some of the fun out of yeah. it. a splash of that. I thought the only thing you were supposed to do with vermouth was wink at it. And again, you could serve this up, but this one, or you could serve this on the rocks, but this is really meant to be served up. Yes. And in this kind of glass. So we'll need our strainer for this. Put usually just a twist of lemon in there as well. Mm -hmm. It's getting some likes from someone. Looks like Katie joined us. John Wyman is on. John Wyman? There's a man that likes his Drake. Ah. I have no idea, by the way. <laughs> I just like saying that about people. It's like, come on, you want to give that a little whirl, sir? I'll have my celery. Mm. It's quite good. Quite so good. the Vesper, just something different, a little variation on the martini, yeah. not something everybody's used to, very James Bond. Mm -hmm. The recipe is a little different than Ian Fleming's yeah. because of the change in the Lille recipe, I guess in the 1980s. So, oh, something else we didn't mention. I'm a huge fan uh, of using the coffee from my little Italian es uh, man, espresso maker. Um, in lots of these types of drinks and yeah. drink combinations. And so experiment around with that, especially good, of course, uh, with the coffee liqueur in those dessert drinks that we'll do in another show. Yeah. But think about it, you got, um, especially if you don't have a massive party, if you just have a few friends coming over, yeah. maybe not just all beer and wine, maybe try the cocktail. Our idea is pick one and make life easy on yourself and yeah. get everything ready in advance. and. You're gonna have a sophisticated, yeah. exciting party that's not just all beer and wine anymore. You might combine it with your potluck. Potluck. Yeah. We did do an awesome show on the potluck, and then we had a potluck that's afterwards. Right. We have that's to do right. it again. Where you brought, by the way, a curried turkey breast yeah. cooked in your Instapot in like 19 minutes. It was. It and was uh, an experiment. And I wrote, did and you, you read my article on Instapot? I did. I did see that. And yeah. I was, and you were one of the people that sort of, you know, I was already yeah. excited about Instapot. That dropped on Friday. Did it Hot drop luck. on Friday? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, okay. good. Now good. Very, very good timing. Very good timing. Super Bowl with, you yeah. know, potluck, then cocktails, then. So yeah, we think all this stuff through. Yeah, well, so we should have that. <laughs> but we should say, if, uh, so before we, we go, we have a couple things to ask our live uh, audience that's watching kind of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. One, come back and look on Facebook, or if you want to see these on YouTube, you're going to yeah. see the new enhanced, super cool looking videos. Share this with a friend if you know anybody that's getting more into entertaining and wants to not just do the same old, same old. Yeah. And uh, if you go to uh, iTunes, uh, give us a five-star review. Well, you give us any review you want, but as you've often said, why, why, would, you why would you do anything do, other yeah. than five stars? And then let producer Leslie know because mm -hmm. we will enter you to win. And so we have another winner. We're doing Amazon gift cards. So we have another winner we could pick for now. Sure. And then next week, remember, it's the start of the new month, so we'll be giving away the dash cam video. Oh, yes. But the way you get entered to win is go give us a review or subscribe on, um, on YouTube. Do you want to pick this up? Form YouTube channel. Yeah, sure. I'm hoping I get our new intern. Yeah. Because she didn't even know there were prizes. And you were our very first subscriber on YouTube. Yeah. Allie Smith. Yeah. So, Allie, if you could let Allie know if we know who she is, <laughs> I will, we just yeah. need her address. And Allie, if you're watching this at some point now or in the future, let us know. Message uh, producer Leslie. So, 
Yeah. These, thank you very much. We hope you enjoy these last two shows in one day. They'll be dropping in their super produced form mm -hmm. and looking real cool over on YouTube and also here. Let's see if there's anybody we need to harass. What does John Wyman say? He just shouts Leslie. And then we've got Tyson. Tyson, I'm looking forward to coming down there, buddy. Katie. John was just expecting to win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, he won. He's won a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we have Katie, who said, "Ooh, this looks like a fun show." I think she yeah. was just responding to this array. Yeah. <laughs> She's pulling up now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With your organic celery, just like that. That's right, Katie. You gotta go back to check. I, I don't know if uh, Katie commented on it or not, but she's responsible for this hair. Oh, but not like God is, but she does. <laughs> well, you never know with Katie. Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't. It's <laughs> true. All right, everybody. Remember to be in top form. Remember to serve cocktails, and remember to give us a five-star review. That's right. My mother would not like this because she always says, "Don't talk with your mouth full." But very good celery. Yeah.